<laughs> That's really nice. That's really nice. Hi everyone and <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back after what's probably been two and a half, three months since my last video and I'm really, really sorry. It's been so long since I've posted anything on here and thanks for your patience. I've either been really slack or I've just had a lot on, I've been busy and I've not been slack. I've been trying to catch up with everything after the um, COVID restrictions have released or been uh, lessened in New Zealand and um, I've been trying to catch up with a whole lot of stuff and sadly I've put these videos on the back banner for a little while. So I'm going to make up for that over the next few months. And I think over the next six months, I've probably got eight or nine planned. The first one I'm working on is quite a complicated one. And it's about 11 or 12 philosophical elements that are all intertwined. It's quite complicated as to how we determine why we take photographs, what we're trying to achieve, and consequently then how we develop our style from that. And as I say, it's complicated, so it's a bit of a head scratcher for me. But I'll keep on going through it. That big message, that big complicated video, will also be supported by um, three or four smaller videos that will pick out several components of that to, to, to reinforce or, or support the messaging. I'm also heading down to the South Island in four weeks um, to the snow, and that's going to be awesome. I was supposed to be running a, a two-week workshop for international clients. But because of the COVID stuff, that had to be cancelled and stopped. So I'm going to go down on my own and I'm looking forward to that because I'll have four or five videos coming from that. Some new locations I haven't been to before and some existing locations I have been to before but taken differently. And I'll also be trying to um, look at uh, how I view the landscapes differently from location to location by adopting some kind of freestyle mentality around photography. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time too in getting some dramatic footage for the videos so I think they're going to be good fun to film and they should be okay to watch I think, I hope. Um, so today, today though I'm going to head into Whakarewarewa village, Whakarewarewa forest the big burn and it's the redwood forest down in Rotorua which is bang in the heart of the North Island of New Zealand and it's a beautiful um, plantation of uh, American redwoods actually and um, this time of year there's some lovely colours in there and I'm going in there um, with the camera for the first time for many months. I haven't had the camera out for about three or four months so I feel like I'm a beginner. So this video today will be about getting back into photography and not having a plan. So I'm not going to have a shooting plan, I've got no predetermined uh, locations I want to shoot when I'm there and I just hope that that doesn't transfer to this video being all over the place, which it might do, but uh, this video is being produced come hell or high water. So I'll leave the house, it's about 20 minutes away my time, but I'll see you in about two seconds your time. <laughs> Why did I look at my watch? Uh, it stays dry. Hi everyone, uh, it's been ages. It's been ages since I've been out with the camera and it's been ages since I've done a video. It's probably been a couple of months. And I was spurred on by a video by Simon Booth recently about uh, planning stifling creativity. Um, now I'm a planner and uh, I've decided to go out today uh, with a good friend Brett uh, who's with me today. And I don't have a plan, we don't have a clue what we're going to shoot. And uh, we're actually here to test some new equipment as well. So Brett has just taken delivery of a camera which I've never seen nor held before until today and uh, you don't get many of them to the pound so um, <laughs> we're going to we're going to head into the forest and we're going to have a little play with both the Pentax 645Z and also uh, Pen uh, Brett's new camera which I'll reveal just very very shortly it's a bit of a treat to be honest um, so we're, we're heading into the redwood forest no clue what we're wanting to take there's lots of people here today so this is going to be quite tough and I know that being a planner I am going to struggle with this so, yeah, let's see what comes. Hopefully the weather will hold up. This is going to be hard. Yeah. This is going to be hard. Now this is the forest we're going into. And a good friend of mine once said that in order for photographers to keep improving, 
you have to socialise with other photographers. Whether it's to discuss techniques, vision, workflow, or just in general talk about the industry and equipment. And that's the only plan that I've got today. So this is the camera that we're out with here. And I'm trying to introduce this slowly because this is the Phase 1 IQ150. And this is a 150 megapixel camera made by Phase 1. And Phase 1 is probably the ultimate of engineering as far as photography goes. So this is the IQ4 back at 151 megapixels. Full 16-bit RAW file, and it's got about 15 stops of dynamic range. And the detail on this thing is simply incredible. This is uh, Brett's first out in with a camera, so it's going to be interesting to see just how much detail this thing captures with its Schneider 35mm lens on. This will be interesting. I held this thing before, and um, it's a big camera, it's heavy, um, and so it should be. Simply incredible, incredible piece of kit. Is it an EVF or is it a standard? It must be an EVF if it's mirrorless, eh? So did, have, you, have you had a file? Did you get a file out of it when you were...? Yeah. And then can you... So that's, that's, that's at 35mm and then you can zoom right in, eh? How many percent is that? It's 100. Holy moly, so look at the, de the detail in the little ferns and stuff away. And that's 100%? It's 100% crop. There's no noise with that or anything, eh? It's just, even in the shadows, see there's detail in the shadows yeah. too? Holy, it's... holy smokes. <laughs> and it's on the screen. <laughs> it's on the screen, yeah, you wait till you get it on yeah. a good retina display or something, eh? Goodness me. So yeah. Because it's it just feels like a piece of engineering, doesn't it? Yeah. Why? And as I said before, it's a learning curve. It is, yeah. But once you've learned, the images will be stunning. Every image you could probably make half a dozen images out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the crop factor. An image. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know. There's an image. There's, there's another image. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. And that's the good thing, even with a wide-angle lens, you can get something cropped in so much mm. and still get 30, 40 megapixels. Yeah, which is greater than standard. Yeah. You know, the latest Canon just come out at 45. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. What, um, what price-wise in these things, what does it start with? Um, that's 90 grand or not. <laughs> now, if you, if you didn't have this AJ, you've got about three inches. Oh. But then you can like, oh. claim, back the, like, claim back the gist. Oh. So basically, oh, good for you. if you're going to start it, it's 100 grand. So they're expensive. So I don't know if I'm uh, still in shock or if I'm actually genuinely confused being in here. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing in here, to be honest. I find this really confusing to take a photograph amongst because there's just so much visible data here. And it doesn't lend itself to me taking my normal, really wide pano type shot because it's just gonna to be too confusing, too messy, too much detail. So I'm gonna to have to train my eye uh, to try and look for something and take something a little bit more intimate but it's a trick in trying to train your eye to find that because I've not yet, I don't think, seen it. Brett's taken a couple of shots already, but I've not been that lucky to find something I want to take. So it will be here. I've just got to look for it. It's a lovely, lovely day and it's great being in here. It's slightly frustra <laughs> frustrating at the same time. Let's go. What I have managed to find is some big trees here on the left and there's a path, like a pathway, a red pathway that comes around the trees 
through the trees. I'm getting some lovely uh, light now from above. It's brightened things up for me. And I think if I can try and visualise this, possibly with putting an Orton over this to try and dull down some of the, de the, the data that is here, it starts changing how I take this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a horizontal panel, a panel, I'll have to get everything levelled off and I'll shoot with this big tree here on the left hand side on the left and I'll sweep across, there's another big tree here it'll probably be in shot number three and uh, I'll take in the back of the fern here I think which is really just, it's quite nice just now so and here's Brett, he's back I'll have to go quite quick with this because the light's changing all the time so it's certainly a lovely part of New Zealand this and I think that on a, on a dull day like today we've got overhead light but it's quite well muted Hey man, how are you? <laughs> and it's a nice gentle light right across the, um, the spectrum of colours here which is really really cool Now it's not rare but you don't find it all the time and this is New Zealand's Silver Fern and this is quite a strong iconic image across New Zealand through industry but made most famous by the Silver Fern on the All Blacks Rugby jersey. So first I'm out with the, the phase one Brett and medium format stuff so you find that that stuff slows you down? Oh, definitely, it's a big learning curve and there's so much to learn but it's exciting. Because the results are going to be stunning. They're going to be stunning here with that 150 megapixel. This is going to be awesome. Big learning curve. It's good the way. Oh. That methodical way of looking at stuff is quite cool. Allows you just spend time and just enjoy yourself. You know, you're taking the photos as well. Because we've been in here for about probably an hour and a half already, eh? So this is the blue acid pools here at the Redwood Forest. And this is quite bizarre. So this is untouched colour-wise. And the water here is crystal, crystal blue. And this is the acidic water that's uh, generated by the geothermal activity here in Rotorua. What I'm actually seeing here is a lovely S line from the foreground to the far distance there. Coming in a little bit closer, it's more pronounced when I get closer down to the water here. There's some beautiful reflections of the trees above. And this water here is almost like glass. And because it's acidic, nothing lives in it, so it's a bit bizarre. And you can see all the, the dead leaves and tree logs and stuff in here. It's just crazy. But I think that this will probably take quite a nice photograph here. So I'm actually going to set up and see what I can see through the viewfinder of the big camera. That's really, really nice. That blue is so strong and the greens under this light are really cool as well. The only one problem I've got with this though is that the grasses that are about a third of the way in the frame are so strong as stalks, they look really over sharpened and it's not sharpened at all. And because I think I'm shooting with medium format and punched in at 160 millimetres, the stalks are so strong, I'm going to have to come up with a way of softening these off and I'll probably do that with a way of an Orton effect over the top. Particularly when I add more data with a two-shot panel with a horizontal frame but stacked 50% on top of one another. But the light here, just the way that the light's catching the trees above and the, the polarised colour of that blue water um, is, is incredible, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. I'll just take this other one. That's so cool. So I'm really struggling with this, this non-planning thing. I'm struggling with this. And we've been in here for a couple of hours uh, already and Rich is saying that he's through one battery. I'm nearly through a battery on the Pentax as well. I've got one bar left. So one of the things that's important though that when you're not planning and you're coming into a place that you've either been to before or you've not, it's quite cool exercise to make sure that you continue to look up, but also look down. And I don't want to get uh, all arty on you, but there's lots and lots of nice pine cones and uh, bits of branches on the ground here. And they're, they're all in aut autumnal colours. There's browns, there's yellows and there's oranges. And I think uh, I've taken two kind of photographs today. I've taken a panel and I took a I've taken a square, but the square I did with a two shot panel vertical frame two shots one on top of the other and that gives me a, a four and a half by four which I can crop to one by one square which I'll show you at the end 
And the last one I'll probably take today is just this kind of arty one and it's me looking down towards the orange. I don't know how this will look and it's certainly not what I do but neither is the non-planning so this is I'm struggling with it. And what we've got is we've got some oranges and browns here but I've also got some wet dark ones or grey ones that are actually looking a little bit blue on the on the screen here and the reason that they're looking a little bit blue is they're picking up the blue light from the sky above us. Now this again is not something I really do but I just like the texture of this. I'm going to go to a couple of seconds and I'll shoot this about a stop under to make it the colours rich, maintain the colours being rich. That's okay actually, that's quite nice. That's maybe not a bad way to finish off this morning's shoot actually. That's, uh, I like that, that's quite cool. Might look quite nice with a gentle big net round the outside as well in post. You've really got to love landscape photography, it's just so relaxing. Yeah, it's quite cool. So that's me back home after what's been a really good fun day today actually. Um, first time out for ages, really enjoyed it, not having a plan, just going with the flow and that's important. Um, ended up getting some uh, three really nice images there today and all of them are different and none of them are probably what I would have taken had I gone there with a, an intent to shoot something. It wouldn't have been what I got. So whether you shoot with a plan or whether you don't, um, it's important that you go to locations and just keep your eyes open and take every opportunity to stop and shoot something that presents themselves um, at you. So, <clears throat> good fun. Um, I'm frozen cold because I've been under the canopy for about three hours, just under three hours, and it's cold and it's damp under there, so it's to my bones. So I'm going to have to spend the rest of the night warming up now. Um, as I say, first video back after a while. Lots more to come over the next six months, so I'm looking forward to this. And I'm going to show you these three images I got just at the very end. So on that, until next time, you keep shooting, you have fun. Whether you have a plan or whether you shoot without a plan, just shoot with your eyes wide open. Until next time, you take care, have fun, and we will see you next time. Cheerio. <laughs>